see see you <laughs> the Carla Kelly Christmas <laughs> universe. <laughs> We're live. Hello. Anyone tuning in? You are about to be so confused. I would say you should go watch the live from yesterday, but it was copyrighted. <laughs> and it's honestly really disrespectful, really rude. 10 hours of primo content down the drain. Yeah. Who's to blame? Sony. Mm hmm. Thanks for nothing. Yeah, but we won't watch the um, Total Eclipse of the Heart music video in this, so hopefully we'll be good. Yeah, we're going to watch zero music videos. We are going to play zero mobile games, <laughs> and we're going to uh, ha have zero reading sprints, so hopefully no one's here for that either. Should and we tell people? Should we like post on our stories that we're here? I mean, do it. I don't know who wants to turn in for this. Like, who? I'm literally just going to make a banner. <laughs> That's like. Oh, wait for the banner. Yeah. Part two of Carla Kelly's Christmas collection. Yep. Carla Kelly's Christmas. Oh, I can't spell Christmas. You should do one of those. Um. The rotating banners. Yes. How do I make it rotate? I think there's like a checkbox. Hold on. Mm. Uh, you have to edit it and like edit oh, the comment. Edit. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Why is that so much funnier? I don't know. It looks like a news banner. Yeah. It's like the New York Stock Exchange, except we're only exchanging <laughs> Carla Kelly's Christmas collection. Um, It's not the New York Stock Exchange. It's the Corn Exchange. Oh, my God. It's the, it's the what's their town called? The, what is it called? I don't know. It was something with an H. The Something Shire Corn Exchange. <laughs> Sorry, that is not a good photo. Let me retake that. Okay. <laughs> Just me cheesing. Yes. Yay! Yay! <laughs> I'm going to save this. Welcome to the Corn Exchange. <laughs> Part two. <laughs> Carla. Okay, Carla. wait. This is about to sound so dumb but i have to ask this question uh-huh okay so this is like regency england okay yes. maybe okay sorry i'm like trying to figure this out because he's a he, well he's not a farmer but he farms right mm -hmm. corn because we were talking about the corn exchange oh is that why he was at the corn exchange because he farms corn specifically i guess but, but my question is is corn corn's not a, like a natural crop of England? Because remember the what was it the the triangle trade? Yeah, and it was originally maize, right? Right, that's American. what I'm saying. So I'm like, wait, how did they get corn? I'm like, <laughs> um, he we already know he's a colonizer because True. he went to India. So this is just further like he is now. Yeah exploiting a different region of the world oh my god that's so classic pete that's, that's why his name is chard yeah chard Char pete chard okay part two of on <laughs> tiny little oh no here I recap <laughs> we know the recap yes we do okay are you ready? I'm trying to see if what I hate about the on my laptop, it, like the touch bar, sometimes it has the URL on the touch bar. I'm like, mm -hmm. is the URL the StreamYard link? And will someone just like randomly zoom into the photo and try and Oh my God. <laughs> I never thought about that. I don't think you can see it. 
hold on. I, I have the invite link, so let me see if it's the same. It really is. Oops. How funny would that be, though? Someone's popping in trying to interrupt <laughs> this. That would be dedication. It would be. Oh, my God. I'm just going to try and, like, scribble. Oh, no, we're fine. Great. Where's my bookmark that I left in here? Hello. Oh. We were on something like 14. I got it. I found it. Oh, there we go. Okay. So as as a quick little refresher, oh, you mentioned me in your story. I can't believe it. <laughs> <laughs> um, the builders were coming and he saw they had all their tools. And he was like, but more importantly, can they sing? <laughs> Okay, to anybody tuning in that wasn't here yesterday, mm -hmm. he needs to find singers for this very competitive um, Christmas carol competition within the three churches that are like all right next to each other in the yes. town. Yeah, don't ask us why there are three churches in <laughs> proximity because Pete doesn't know either. <laughs> but he bestows the living for one of them. Maybe there's just like three marquees in the same area. I mean, perhaps. Okay, ready? Oh, yes. I've been waiting all day for this. <laughs> Let me read that last sentence because it flows so nicely. I need to keep it in there. Okay. But more to the point, he said out loud as he took a tug at his neckcloth and looked for his coat. Can these builders sing? They could and did, he discovered. <laughs> And with the same enthusiasm that his new valet had shown, it was starting to snow again and the temperature was dropping even as he stood there in the driveway, hands in his pockets as the men gathered around. To his unutterable joy, they looked at each other, someone hummed a note, and they sang while shepherds watched their flocks by night. Do you know that song? Because I sure don't. Should we cool. look it up? No, we'll get no. it up. Yeah, not again. <laughs> The song, I, we can make it up though. Oh, what if I looked it up and then I muted myself and then I sang it back to you? I love that idea. Okay, Go what's ahead. it called? While shepherds watched their flocks by night. It really rolls off the tongue. Oh my God, wait, it's showing up on the YouTube show. Okay, hold on. Mute yourself. She's absorbing the song. <laughs> oh, you're really taking it in. <laughs> I don't know if that's a face of appreciation or confusion. It's just a lot of organs right now. So. Oh, okay. And it, it feels like it fits the tone of the book very well. Okay. Sounds like it's very, very, um, I don't know the word I'm looking for. <laughs> oh, she hates it. <laughs> I will listen to a line and then sing it and then pause it. Okay. I won't remember. That's fair. While shepherds watch their flocks by night, all seated on the ground. <laughs> the angel of the came down and glory shone around okay i'm done i'm done with it i don't want any more <laughs> thank you for putting me out of my misery i wow what a song okay so that's what they were singing as they built apparently the song rang with all the fervor that he remembered from the welsh fusiliers in india singing in spite of or perhaps because of the worst conditions. Thank you for tallying that. 
How is it that the Welsh can even make the closing notes hang in the air as though they sing in a cathedral? He sighed with pleasure. One of the men stepped forward, didn't quite bow, which pleased Chard, I mean Pete, even more. And introduced should I write him. down, should I write down sighed with pleasure? I was gonna say you definitely could. Okay. And introduced himself as Daniel App Jones. It's just AP in the middle of his name. I don't know what that is. Late <laughs> sergeant of the Fusiliers and a graduate like himself of the hard school of Asaye. Goodbye. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> I outrank them others, sir, he said, indicating the other singers. Your old friend in Swansea indicated that you might like that song, considering that it's a local favorite. <laughs> I just, I need different voices. <laughs> Why it is, Jones, think on, he replied, lapsing gracefully into the color of local speech. Oh, okay, so whatever. He looked <laughs> down the lane again as another conveyance approached, and then back at Jones, a question in his eyes. Our wives, Jones said. Jones said, a colonel thought you could use them too. <laughs> I am in heaven, Jones, he replied simply. And do they sing as divinely as you? The men looked at each other. All except Lloyd's wife, sir, Jones <laughs> explained, the remorse deep in his voice. The other builders chuckled and nudged the one who must be Lloyd. He married Grace Lee Biddle from Devon, and she can't even carry a note to the corner and back. <laughs> Ah, lad, me old lady can cook. Lord bless the military, he thought. <laughs> the whole unloading of wives, children, household goods, and tools was accomplished with certain precision that made him proud, even though he was just six years removed from the army. Oh, even though he was six years removed from the army. Just long enough, I suppose, for me to forget what a tedious, nasty business it really was, he said to Rosie that night his feet propped on Emma's bed as he relaxed in a chair he drew up close. Rosie nodded. Glorious once in a while on parade. I forgot what her voice sounds like already. <laughs> she sat next to Emma on the bed, her fingers light on the child's hair. Did you ever fight with the Fusiliers, my lord? He nodded. I commanded an excellent brigade, my dear. My dear? That's awfully casual and familiar. Also, they're referencing India again. Yep. <laughs> Italy. They, I don't think they've stopped, frankly. <laughs> um, but I was always glad when the Fusiliers were close by. He looked at his daughter, who rested dreamy-eyed and at peace with herself, against Rosie's round belly. That's also, also very familiar. Okay. <laughs> and now, my dearest Emma... You have been tended, coddled, fed, read to, and entertained for the better part of the day by someone much kinder and softer than your father. Let me recommend sleep to you now. Rosie smiled at him, and he could only smile back because she was irresistible. <laughs> Emma assures me that you are kindness itself, my lord, she teased. He bent over to kiss his daughter, but stopped when he noticed how round her eyes had become. She was looking at Rosie, a question in her eyes. The little one always gets lively in the evenings, Emma, the woman explained, resting her hand on her belly. Only think how busy I will be when she, or he, is born. Emma let out a sigh, her eyes still filled with amazement as she pressed her ear against Rosie. This is a little weird to me. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Before he could stop her, she grabbed his hand and placed it against Rosie's side. Oh. <laughs> Papa, can you imagine anything half so wonderful? That's what a, a six-year-old child <laughs> considers wonderful. He could not. As embarrassed as he was, Pete knew Emma would be upset if he snatched his hand away. Trusting that Rosie would not smite him for his most ragged of manners, he kept his hand where Emma held it, touched by the tumult within. He remembered better times with Lucy. Oh boy. 
when she had wrapped her arms around him as they lay in bed, and he had felt the steady kicking of their newborn son against his back. It is wonderful, Emma, he agreed. Sorry that his voice was not more steady. Wait, is he, he the little spoon in that scenario, or yes. is his son born? No, he's the little spoon in that scenario. It's a great mental image, I love it. <laughs> He took his hand slowly away, too shy to look at the Welsh woman. Did I do that too? Emma asked him in hushed tones. Oh, did I do that too? <laughs> I'm certain you did, love, he assured her. She sat up. But you don't know? I wasn't there. I was in India. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is hardly going to satisfy her, he thought. Not this daughter who questions everything. He held his breath, exasperated with himself. Emma frowned at him, and he knew he was trapped into more explanation than he wanted to begin, especially under the amused glance of Rosie Weatherby. Then how? Emma paused, her frown deepening. Grandmama told me. To his relief, Rosie came to his rescue. My dear, do you think your questions can keep until your grandma returns? Emma nestled next to Rosie again. Do you mean that my father does not know the answers? She asked softly. Peter laughed. Oh, no, you scamp. It is merely that this subject, that this is a subject not to be discussed lightly. I promise I won't tell Will, Emma whispered. I only want to know how babies get in and how they get out. It is not so much to ask. No, it is not, he agreed, reminding himself that he, if he had wanted an easy path, he would still be in the army, with Wellington now in Spain, and far away from questions that made him sweat more than combat. Oh my God, that makes you sweat more than combat? <laughs> Get it together. Do you know, Emma, I can answer those very questions, Rosie said finally. That is, if your father will allow me. Quite possibly, I will kneel at your feet and worship the ground that you glide over, he thought. Mrs. Weatherby, you're on, he said, without allowing her a millisecond to change her mind. <laughs> he kissed his daughter. Good night, my dear. <laughs> Emma kept her arms around his neck. Papa, you could stay and listen too. Perhaps you will learn something. <laughs> he laughed and kissed her again. I probably would, he thought, as he stood in the doorway and watched the two of them with their heads together. How odd, Mrs. Weatherby, how odd. I do not know you well, but I trust you. Your mother-in-law claims that you are common, but I call you uncommon. <laughs> <laughs> what a line. Oh my God. Underline that one, underline that okay. one. Okay. <laughs> let the people on Kindle know that's a mm -hmm. good line. Yeah, it's for the people, <laughs> my civic duty. Uncommonly fine, he considered as he relaxed in the next bedchamber, listening to Will read his geography and paying no attention to the description of the land of Serendip. Huh? True, he had been no farther from his holdings than Leeds in the past six years, but he knew he had never seen finer brown eyes anywhere. Her lips were full and seemed as generous as her nature. Okay. <laughs> True, it would take a man with a greater imagination than he possessed to divine what a figure she really had. Is that how, oh wait, I forgot Will's voice. Is that how it is, Papa? I'm afraid so, son, he replied with a shake of his head. I am undone over a woman seven months gone with child who is the daughter of a Welsh color sergeant and worse and worse, the widow of a scamp with cheese where his brains should have been. <laughs> There's no explaining it. <laughs> oh my god, I love cheese for brains. <laughs> he looked up to see Will frowning over the top of his geography. Papa, all I wanted to know was whether the water is truly that blue in Columbo's Harbor. Charred blade. I had my mom there. Next door, Papa, Will asked, and Pete started again. Am I so transparent? Well, yes, actually, he managed. 
Will closed the book and came to where he sat. Why does it sound like his eight-year-old son is about to have a heart-to-heart -heart with him? Like, Dad, it's time I give you the talk. They're having the same talk in two different rooms. <laughs> uh, Pete made room for him. Papa, I am worried about Emma too, but I think that Rosie... Mrs. Weatherby, his father corrected him automatically. She wanted me to call her Rosie, Will said. Rosie can manage Emma, so you needn't worry and get all blank in the face. And blank in the head, he thought. Son, it's, it is time for bed. Papa? Hmm? Do you think Rosie would wait for me to grow up so I could marry her? That's what I would most like to do. Oh, I forgot. I thought he was talking about his sister for a second. Eesh. Pete smiled at his son. I think you should not place too large a wager on the matter. Come now and climb into bed. Will did as he was told. Maybe someone like Rosie then, he amended after Pete kissed him goodnight. There is no one like Rosie, Pete thought as he closed the door and went quietly downstairs. The only thing he knows about this woman is that she goes on walks, she's pregnant, and she can sing. <laughs> yeah, no, the only things he knows about her is that she likes to go on walks, she's pregnant, and she has a golden throat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're right. The distinction is very important there. <laughs> yes, it's a different level. She was waiting for him in the sitting room before the fireplace, where the butler had directed her, ready to pour tea. He seldom drank tea in the evening because he hated to get up in the middle of the night to deal with its consequences. <laughs> but he took a cup from Rosie and then made sure she had the most comfortable chair with a pillow behind her back. I trust now that Emma is armed with enough information to make her dangerous at family gatherings. Oh, I inserted an extra word in there. Just pretend that made sense. He joked as Rosie relaxed into the chair. He pushed a low stool under her feet when she raised them. Do I dare take her anywhere? The woman sipped her tea appreciatively and leaned back. Of course. I assured her that everything I told her was privileged information and that she was not to divulge any of it to her friends. Or will, she assured me. She laughed and leaned forward to touch his wrist as he sat close to her. They do so much arm touching. It's like slightly scandalizing considering Tell who they are. The choir. Tell me about the choir. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me how much my daughter understands about pregnancy. Well, <laughs> she is so bright. He cleared his throat. It, it doesn't embarrass you to talk about such things. She thought a moment and then shook her head. Oh, someone just followed me. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably from this impeccable reading. That I'm doing. It is. Children like to know what's going on, sir. It's only life. I mean, you know what? I'm highlighting that. That is a good line. Children do like to know what's going on, and it is only life. Right? Like, that's why kids ask questions so much. Good line, Carla. Good line, Carla. Good line. So it is, he said. He was silent then, looking into the fire and feeling no need to talk. It was enough to sit with Rosie. He was working up some conversation when his bailiff came into the room with idle nonsense about grain storage that apparently could not wait until morning. With real reluctance, he offered his apologies to Rosie, set Cook's Good Biscuits closer to her elbow, and followed his bailiff to the book room, hating every step of the way. I mean, didn't he just build a new barn? I feel why like he did. Why is he already, like, struggling to find storage? Unless the builders, like, started the barn, but the barn isn't ready yet. I don't know. Too busy singing. I know. They really glossed over it because he's like, uh, can we do auditions real quick? Like... <laughs> He knew she would be gone to bed when he returned, so he almost did not go into the sitting room again when his bailiff was through. I should at least ring for my footman so he can remove the tea, he thought, as he hesitated at the door. Oh my god, if she's still there, I feel like this is a primo chance for a romantic moment. Oh, it's definitely happening. Because the kids are asleep. I know. The room was dark. The fire settling into the glow of coals that reminded him of Christmas. I wonder where I could find, or I wonder where I will find my Yule log this year, he thought idly. 
and I am certain that it will take me all of next month to figure out a way to invite Rosie Weatherby to celebrate the season with us without all her deplorable in-laws sniffing at her heels. He went to throw himself down in his chair again, but there was Rosie where he had left her, only asleep this time. <laughs> Imagine if he had like thrown himself in the chair right on top of her. <laughs> Horrible. <laughs> That's a rude wake-up call. <laughs> Only asleep this time, her head pillowed against the chair wing, her feet tucked under her. Without a word, he sat himself on the stool where her feet had been, relishing the sight of her. Rosie? Rosie? He called her name quietly, and she did not waken. Oh, too bad, he thought with real pleasure as he carefully picked her up and went to the stairs. Oh, too bad I have to carry her. Oh, no. <laughs> She was hardly a weight at all as he climbed the stairs with his Christmas soprano. <laughs> she seems against his I, I want there to be a steamy scene and I want the moans to be described in terms of <laughs> soprano. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. That would that would be ideal, I think. <laughs> Um, she settled against his arm as though she belonged there and he was, oh my God, she did it again with hard put. Oh my God. <laughs> and he was hard put to lay her down. Even when he stood over her cot, every time she tricks me, I'm like, excuse me. <laughs> he put her down with great reluctance, pleased at the boneless way she slept. <laughs> I don't really know what she means, but I hate that sentence. This was not a woman to thrash about or walk the floor for no reason, growing more irritable by the moment and berating him because this was Northumberland and not London. That's it, Northumberland. Oh. With a sigh, Rosie Weatherby succumbed to the mattress, made it her own, and offered no objection when he removed her shoes. See? Okay. Shoe removals. Oh my God. Julia Quinn has an influence on this book. <laughs> Her stockings were clean, but darned many times. He picked up one of the shoes he had set down and looked at the rundown heel and the sole thin from walking. Yeah, because we know she walked 25 miles to Northumberland. <laughs> he knew he was in no position to offer her anything, but he could think of no subterfuge that would trick her into accepting even a pair of cotton stockings from him. This is a season of giving, and as a widower, I cannot give her clothing. It would only appear forward or suggestive of mischief, he thought. <laughs> <laughs> he blew out the candle on the nightstand and turned to go. Some impulse turned him around again. Him, the least impulsive of men. He knelt beside the bed and rested his hand on her belly again. Okay. The baby inside was sleeping for now, sleeping now for all he knew. With a smile, he pressed steadily on Rosie's side until one little move, until the little one moved away from his hand and kicked back to his delight. He lightened the pressure of his hand and tensed all over when Rosie murmured something and covered his hand with her own. I do not dare move, he thought in panic. The baby continued to kick. And then in another moment, Rosie's hand was heavy as she returned to a deeper sleep. He waited another moment. That is straight out of a horror movie. Imagine you're a pregnant woman and you're sleeping and you wake up and there's just a man standing over you with his hand on your belly. Yeah, that's some real I want to steal your baby business. <laughs> Terrifying. I have not seen Rosemary's Baby, but I can only imagine that's a scene in it. Rosie, Rosemary. Oh my God. <laughs> That's why she named her that. It's all an homage. <laughs> Terrifying. Um, he sat for a while in the chair, content to watch them both, until he realized with a guilty pang that his valet, the tenor, was probably waiting up for him. <laughs> Everyone is just their vocal part. I can't wait for him to be like, my daughter, the soprano, asked him. <laughs> oh, my God. At least Owen Llewellyn is not the sort to wring his hands and grieve if I am late, he thought as he left the room quietly. And I did tell him never to wait up for me. 
To his, to his relief, Llewellyn was asleep in his little corner of the dressing room. He had laid out Pete's nightshirt and robe, and the fire was just high enough for comfort. In a moment, Pete was in bed, if vaguely disappointed with his solitude. Emma will not want me tonight, he thought, his hands behind his head as he stared at the ceiling. Will seldom gets up at night. At least his feet were not cold. Llewellyn had thoughtfully placed a warming pan in his bed. Soon Christmas will be upon us, he thought, closing his eyes and enjoying the warmth. Mama will ask me what I would like for a present, and I will never be able to think of anything as usual. We'll probably go to Bella's, provided her little criminals are all over the chicken pox. He called his <laughs> nieces and nephews the little criminals. <laughs> Brother-in-law Matthew will carve the goose, and Bella will look at me in that soft way of hers. She will assure me that it would be no trouble to find me an agreeable widow, or a maiden lady who would be relieved to splice herself to a farmer with a pedigree, however little he bothered about it, considerable wealth, and two children. Wow, that was a lot. That was literally his Tinder profile. <laughs> farmer with a pedigree, bothered a little about it, considerable wealth, two children. <laughs> Except it's like, two children want more. <laughs> Because you know how there's like on Bumble, there's that thing that's like, has children, doesn't want more, has children, wants more. I <laughs> have not used Bumble, so I, I don't know. That's yes. not a prompt yeah. on Hinge. Yeah. The vo oh my God, he would eat up the voice prompts on Hinge because he could then determine if everybody's a soprano or whatever. Oh my God. <laughs> he gets one listen to my voice and he's like, not a soprano, got it, swipe, <laughs> swipe right. <laughs> First life left. <laughs> oh my God. Oh, Pete. There is no reason for a woman of fashion or sense to marry you. She had raged at him during the recent visit to deposit Mama. I have always thought you handsome, but you will insist upon wearing your clothes until they are fit for nothing but the rag bag. And it must have been months since someone with skill cut your hair. He grinned in the dark, remembering how his mild comment that at least he did not stink and never scratched in public had only served to propel her irritation to undreamed of heights. He knew they should both be embarrassed because Mama had to intervene, as she uh, had been doing for more than 30 years. But Lord forgive him. It was still fun to tease his little sister, Belly. Oh my God, is he from the summer I turned pretty? I turned pretty. <laughs> His thoughts changed direction. He looked over, he turned over on his side and looked out the window. He had forgotten to close the draperies, but then he seldom closed them. So can you say he's forgotten to if he seldom does it? <laughs> the stars were as bright as the coming of winter could make them. He thought then of Hayden and his choir, all bedded down for the night and ready to begin in the barn tomorrow. This could be a choir competition that no one would forget. It was that it was his last thought before the sky brightened with dawn. What? He's falling asleep at dawn? <laughs> okay, I'm gonna let it go. Even they are apparently he, talking about grain storage for a very long time. I guess so. Even though he and Will hurried through breakfast with Emma and Rosie, the Welsh carpenters were already hard at work when they arrived at the building site. Bless me, they are singing, Pete thought as he approached the farmyard. I am in heaven. <laughs> he and Will just stood and listened, arm in arm, admiring the crispness of the notes in the cold morning. Why are they so good, Papa? Will asked, his voice hushed and reverent as the carpenters, to the rhythm of hammers and saws, sang a hymn they were both familiar with. I love that they're working in rhythm with the song. <laughs> It's um like uh the seven dwarves. Yeah, I was gonna say it's like the opening scene of Frozen where they're like, Oh yeah. I can't I think of any other words to it, but yeah. Something about ice. This icy heart both foul and fair as a frozen heart worth finding. Yeah. They like that. Some say it is merely because they are from Wales, Chard replied. I mean, he replied, I can't. <laughs> Emma would call that a silly reason after a moment. What would you say? 
His son smiled. I would say it didn't matter, as long as they sing so well. Pete nodded. No question that you are my son, he thought, pleased with himself. I suppose it irritates Emmy, but some things just can't be explained. Wait, no question that you are my son? So she was cheating on him? That was my same thought where I was like, that seems like a really pointed... I mean, he talked earlier about like some physical resemblances he had to his children, but that doesn't guarantee. It doesn't. Oh my God, we need the backstory about Lucy. Well, and I'm especially, cause okay, like thinking about it truly. So he just had that scene with Emma where she's like, but wait, how could you have not been there when mom was pregnant with me? Like if a six-year-old is questioning it, seems like there's a missing piece of the puzzle. See, we picked up on it before the six-year-old though, so. <laughs> so that shows we have great inference skills. <laughs> Oh my god. They helped where they could that morning, but soon, but it was soon obvious to Chard that his old friend in Wales had chosen this crew for both singing and building capacities. Sorry, I said Chard again. I can't let it go now. <laughs> he was glad enough to retreat inside after sharing lunch with his crew in the shelter of the cow barn close by. Oi with the barns already. You can't stop. Will shivered it with the cold, even though Pete knew he would never admit it. Will, perhaps we could rescue Mrs. Weatherby from Emma for an hour or two. You wouldn't mind entertaining your sister, would you? He asked, careful to overlook Will's chattering teeth. If, if you think they won't miss us here, Papa, he said. Will, or Pete looked to, Pete shook his head. They can spare us, lad. He, they arrived upstairs to find the doctor with Emma, thumping her for soundness. <laughs> What? <laughs> like he's like smacking her back, being like, are you healthy yet? <laughs> I'm just picturing the doctor backhanding her. <laughs> are you well yet? Come on. Oh, God. Interesting. Yeah, I've never heard of that before. <laughs> An interesting practice, to be sure. While Rosie sat in the window seat, relaxed yet watchful at the same time. I have seen cats guard their kittens like that, Pete thought with amusement. He joined her in the window seat. Um, I suppose he must, no, I suppose he must hope that he declares, what? I suppose I must hope that he declares Emma of, s oh my God, this <laughs> sentence. I suppose I must hope that he declares Emma sound of wind and limb, she whispered to him finally. Yeah, exactly. That's like wind and that. limb, wind and limb. Yeah, yeah, wind and limb. You suppose? Pete asked, surprised. She nodded, not taking her eyes from the doctor. He will not need me anymore when he declares her fit. He could say nothing to that because she was right. Now that is a dreadful turn of events, he thought, and thrashed himself mentally for not considering the eventuality. I am a yes, better so friend. unfortunate that my daughter recovers her health. <laughs> exactly. Oh no, I didn't think about the consequences of my daughter not being sick anymore. Oh. <laughs> oh, and this is his thought. I am a butterfly living for the moment, he told himself in disgust. <laughs> While I would never wish Emma ill, it is too bad Rosie is such a proficient nurse. Hold on, I gotta highlight the butterfly line real quick. Oh my god, thank you, Tim. <laughs> Kill on the voice acting game. You need to like just link this on your resume to like yeah. whenever you apply to um, theater positions. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They'll be like, wow, good work. <laughs> I'm sorry, I can't get the stupid. I in the quote. It doesn't want to highlight I. I want I in there. She's like driving me bananas. <laughs> My nook did the same thing and then I just gave up and didn't highlight the quote. Why? Be that right there. Hold on. Wait. 
<laughs> oh my god, this is so annoying. Hold on. Oh my god. <laughs> okay, I give up. I give up. I hate it. I hate it. Last try. Yes, nailed it. Oh, you finally got it. I got it. Wow. Congrats. I am a butterfly. Wow. That kind of just came out of nowhere, though. Yeah. <laughs> excellent. Excellent, Lord Wife, the doctor declared as he straightened up. He sounds a lot like the vicar, suspiciously. <laughs> That's the same man, or played by the same man. Hold on. I'll give, I can give him a different voice. Um, okay, he'll, he'll be old. Another day and Emma will be sound as a roast, right, my dear? He beamed at her as Emma glared back and tugged at her nightgown. You liked it? That's good, right? Great accent, right? <laughs> Sound as a roast. So the the wind and limb was successful. Yeah. <laughs> wind and limb was good. The thrashing was good. <laughs> She's gonna be sound as a roast. Or no, thumping is what he was doing. He was thumping her, not thrashing her. <laughs> I mean, what's the difference? Yeah, same difference. <sighs> he walked the doctor downstairs, only half listening to his story of neighborhood illnesses and all the while thinking, tomorrow I will have to return Rosie to those deplorable Weatherbees. Lady Weatherby will never spend a penny to take Rosie to the silk warehouse for even a pair of stockings, much less a cloak that isn't full of holes. I wonder if Rosie even has a single nightgown or nappy for the baby. The thought upset him as nothing else could. He remembered all the care and attention he had lavished on Lucy when she was waiting Will's arrival. The clothes, the special food, a cradle specially made, and more nightgowns, sacks, and receiving blankets than Will could ever use. Doctor, when you return tomorrow, would you ask Mrs. Weatherby if she would like to take, no, would like to talk to you about her approaching confinement, he asked as they stood together by the front door. I'm also quite willing to take on the charge for that event because she has been so helpful to me there. I will let that be my gift of thanks. I suppose this means that the Weatherbees are doing nothing for her? The doctor asked. He must not have expected an answer because he hurried on. We've been hearing things in the village. <laughs> he allowed the footman to help him into his coat. Ah, oh, me. Of course I will speak to her tomorrow. He sighed again. Things must have been a pretty pass for her in Portugal if she was if she thought marrying Junius Weatherby would improve her situation. From what she told me, her hand was forced. <laughs> she was, uh, got me out of breath doing that old man. <laughs> <laughs> she is surely not the first to contract a disastrous alliance under a fog of optimism. Pete heard himself saying, Where did that come from? he asked himself. After his return from India, <laughs> Pete had resolved that he would not think about Lucy and what had gone before. But as he sank, as he sat in the tub that afternoon, chin on his knees, he found that he could not help it. That man is sitting in the tub like this. That was my phone falling. I chin on his knees. like that. Chin on his knees in the tub. Yeah. Like this. Yeah. It's not comfortable. I find it extremely comfortable. Actually. Maybe while I'm watching a movie. Not in the bath. But it's probably like I sit, I sit under the water. Oh. So I don't like sit back on the wall. Interesting. But I, like I, I stop the tub and then I don't fill it up with the tap. I just fill it up with the the shower head. Fascinating. It's like the best of both worlds. This is bothering me. I can't see which one it. Oh, you're like Pete it's getting strange. to close the blind. Yeah, there we go. I just had to scoot the whole couch forward. I know, I'm just like Pete, even though I seldom close the blinds. Okay. Where was I? He saw no point now in asking himself why he had ever agreed to the wedding. He had not needed her money. There was no land of any value that came with her. His parents, not hers, were under no obligation. He had met her at an assembly ball in Durham, but he had met other young ladies there before. 
true. She was a pleasure to look at and the daughter of a well-connected family. But that was all. I would have never pursued the affair on my own, he decided as he soaked himself and let Owen Llewellyn pour warm water over him. <laughs> the, the tenor? <laughs> yeah, the tenor's his valet. <laughs> <laughs> as the tenor poured warm water over him. <laughs> My family has always known me to be shy and, bless their hearts, they thought to help. The thing is, why did I ever let them talk me into it? And more to the point, why am I still so pliable? He thought he was not. No farmer was more resistant than to panic than he, especially in the corn exchange when the buyers were more irritating than fleas calling bids. He had the instinct to know when, to, when the bid would go no higher and waited until then. He had stood firm at Asaye when he wanted to scream and run and dig a hole somewhere and drop himself into it. In a voice as calm as though he had asked someone to pass the bread at the table, he had gone from man to man, encouraging, prompting, standing tall as shot and shell whizzed about him at the Katna Ford. What was it about Lucy Monroe that he had been unable to cry off when he knew he wanted to? Why was he so unable? Okay, like, I'm going to call BS right now. I just feel like it makes more sense if it was like, sure, they got married. And then later he was like, oh, I actually don't like her at all. I think it's so annoying for him to be like, Oh, I never even wanted to marry her, but everyone made us. Why didn't I just tell them no? Yeah. Spineless. Uh -huh. I should have never listened to all my friends and relations telling me what a prize I was getting in Lucy Monroe, he thought, as he wrapped himself in his robe and sat looking out the window. What little conversation we had before marriage showed her to be a shallow, vain little thing. I should have withdrawn my offer, taken my lumps, and left the field. He winced and felt his shoulders grow cold. <laughs> Even though the room was well heated. Instead, I married her and discovered quickly that my wife was no fun. She was fueled by no love, like, or even lust, and saw no more to me than a title for herself and the promise of London, in which I sadly disappointed her. She hated every minute of her confinement with Will and never wanted me near her again. Almost never. This supports our theory. I'm going to let that sink in while I pour more water. Well, what does almost never mean? That's what I'm saying. Is that to imply that he is Emma's father? Like they did it one last time and she yeah. was. One it. last time. time. What would Chris Jackson be in the Christmas choir? What level? Mm. I think he's a tenor. Tenor. Yeah. So the ballet doesn't need to be there anymore. Yeah. Owen Llewellyn. Actually, my head canon is Owen Llewellyn is played by Christopher Jackson. So <laughs> that makes Owen my new favorite character. Oh my God. Uh, honestly, first of all, same. <laughs> Anyone played by Chris Jackson, I'm like, I love you. You're great. Um, okay, who, wait, can we fan cast Pete and Rosie real quick? Yes. Oh my God. Wait, Pete's blonde, right? I think so. I'm trying to think of blonde people. There's not that many blonde actors. I know. The only one I can think of is Ross Lynch. <laughs> no, and he's not even old enough. I know, I know. If Will is like eight. Okay, let's Google blonde actors. We need some like options. He has to be at least like in his 30s. Mm hmm. Now that's a good ASMR. Oh, yeah. I love glass ASMR. <laughs> that's just a fun fact about me. I don't know any of these people. They're not even blonde. They're brunette. Ugh, the nerve. I'm going to hold on. Blonde. And don't you dare say Austin Butler. I hate that man. Well, I don't picture him as. Oh, someone said Alex, Alex Pettifer. Oh, cool. 
that he's almost like, like I don't picture Pete being that pretty. I picture him more plain. I don't know who this man is, but I could picture him. Who are you? Chase Hoyt. Do you know Chase Hoyt? Let me Google him. Google him. Chase Hoyt. Okay. Oh, but he's 42. So he could be 42. I guess. Is he too old? Why am I getting pictures of women in this Google search? Oh, I guess I put actors and not men. That'll do it. Ooh, ah, I almost accidentally took a screenshot of this Google search. <laughs> um, not Leonardo DiCaprio, please. Not blonde Zac Efron. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god, someone said Kevin McKidd from Grey's Anatomy. Oh my god. These are gingers. People don't understand what blonde hair is, huh? They really do not. <laughs> Why is Harry Styles on this list? I don't know. Uh, I don't know. Oh, there's Ross Lynch. <laughs> Why is Hugh Jackman here? I mean, I love Hugh Jackman, but why are you here? Oh my God, the kid from Outer Banks. I don't know. I don't. I haven't watched Outer Banks. Joffrey's on this list. <gasps> Tom Belton. <laughs> okay, but what about Hunter Parrish? I love Hunter Parrish. I mean, I'll, I'll know his face when I see it. Hold yes, on. you will. How old are you right now, honey? He's 35. It works. Okay, we have our man. Okay, now who's playing Rosie? She has dark hair. Mm hmm. Hmm. Huh. She in her 20s or her 30s? I feel like she's younger than him. Yeah, brunette actress. Mm -hmm. hmm. But I also, and this is like such a specific request, but like there's some actresses, like even if it's someone who can't sing and they're going to like dub over the singing, she has to look like someone who can sing. Oh, Do you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Because there's some, like, beautiful people where I'm like, I don't believe that you carry a tune very well. You're so right. Okay, let's see. No. Who is this? Oh, that's a slideshow. Hold on, I gotta find... Uh -huh. hmm. What about Aisling Franciosi? <laughs> <laughs> Can you send me a link? I want yes. <laughs> I'm not going to make you try to type that name. I found her picture and then I had to go through the article. I think it's just because I don't really know her that I believe she could sing. I can see it. The Nightingale. Which is on my watch list also. Not the same as the book. Which book? What's the Nightingale about? By Kristen Hanna? Oh, maybe. I think, no, no, no. The movie's like a horror movie. Oh. oh she but it looks really like, oh my God. And it has Sam Claflin in it. Sorry. <laughs> I got really excited. <laughs> okay, yes. This is a good cast. Okay. 
cool. There they are. Oh, wait, I need to see your picture again. Yeah. Okay. Anyways, where were we? <laughs> he was grateful that he did not have to make conversation on the way to choir practice. His carriage was filled with the Welsh women and the men came after in the gig and on horseback. Rosie Weatherby sat next to him, her eyes bright with the pleasure of being with her father's countrywoman. She glanced at he glanced at Rosie, who was cramped so tightly against him that he could feel her baby kick. You're right. When you said this is like a kink, you were right. <laughs> I'm sorry. I can't. It really <laughs> it's is weird. It's, it's gotten to a point where it's weird. <laughs> it should have flattered him that she was so loath to leave his house, his house, his house tomorrow. But it only sank him deeper, knowing that there was nothing he could do to stop it. Sorry, I'm just checking the page count. Oh, we're doing good. What's our location that it ends on? Um, 1,969. We're on 1,677. Oh my God, we've already read 200? We're flying. Oh my God. Okay, whew. sorry. Now I'm like... Maybe it's because we're not re resorting to giggles and saying golden throats every <laughs> time. <laughs> not yet. There's still time. Yeah, they're going to choir less. practice. They're going to choir practice. I know. Lots of and gold we're, we're just there. less slap happy than yesterday because we had been on for so long. We were just so goofy. <laughs> Wouldn't okay. change a thing. <laughs> St. Philemon's was brightly lit, and he was gratified to see so many carriages, gigs, and blanketed horses there. He drew his singers around him for a moment of strategy before they went inside. Oh my god, they're doing like a huddle. Wait, I have a question. Is the mom not back yet? Because I thought no. she came back. No, oh. she's still in Leeds. Wasn't there like an intermission with the sister? He was thinking about when his sister was like, ugh, so many girls. I could get you a widow. Oh, oh, she wasn't. Oh, I see, I see. Yeah, he was just thinking about it. Um, I know you will all do your best, he said simply, and then laughed and shook his head as some of the veterans of Wellington's army grinned at him. Lads, I know what you're thinking. Although I must sound like every officer who has ever exhorted on you exhorted you on the field of battle. Believe me, this is more important than Agincourt and Blenheim combined. <laughs> he enjoyed their laughter and continued to their amusement in his brigade major voice. If we do not have a good choir, my mother will be sorely disappointed. I will have to sneak into the back pew at St. Phil's every Sunday morning, and the vicar will preach deadly sermons from Leviticus or Revelation to take his revenge upon me. Do your best. England may not care much, but I do. Oh my God, you're never going to guess what the, last, what the next line is. What? The steps were icy. <laughs> so instinctively <laughs> to look for Rosie. Oh my God. <laughs> when she was making an outline for this book, she put five bullet points and one of them was steps icy. <laughs> oh my God. She's going to fall down the steps. It's going to happen. Oh my God. What if something happens to her baby? I'm like nervous. Or oh that's. That's what happens, though, is it's like a scare and everything's fine, but he has to take care of her. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What's happening behind me? I can't figure out my hair right now. Oh, my God. So he turned instinctively to look for Rosie. He found her at his side, grasped her by the elbow, and helped her indoors without saying a word. Oh, it's instinctual now. <laughs> Once inside, he looked at her. That was silly, wasn't it? He said. She shook her head. Lord Wythe, do you know what your singers are already saying about you? I can't imagine. And he couldn't. While he had admired the Fusiliers, I still don't know how to say that word in India, he had never commanded them. Well, maybe I can, he amended, as he walked with her to the choir seats at the front of the chapel. I am Lord Mark Time, eh? <laughs> he could tell he had surprised her with that nickname. Oh no, she exclaimed. Mostly they are excited to be working for you because they remember you from India. She leaned closer. 
were you really a legend there? Oh my god. Oh my god. It was his turn to stare. Not that I know of, he replied honestly. <laughs> they must have confused me with someone else. <laughs> No, they haven't, she replied. Men like that don't confuse their heroes. I never imagined, he began. You probably never did, she said. He looked at her. I'm not the quickest man on the planet. Yes, you are, she said. What you are also is humble, and I think it must be so rare that no one recognizes it. She touched his arm. Again. Why don't we have a tally for arm touches? For real. <laughs> The next story we read from her. Oh my god, this should be an annual thing where we just read a Carla Kelly Christmas yes! story every year. I would love that. Okay. She touched his arm. For your children's sake, please never change. He stared at her. No one had ever spoken to him like that before, and her words fell on him like warm rain. He had no idea what to say and was relieved when the choir master asked them to take their seats. His face still blazing with embarrassment, Pete settled her between the two of the weakest sopranos and took his place with the basses. His under bailiff made room for him, leaning close to whisper. I'm trying to remember if I gave the under bailiff a voice. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for sending for Meg. He shrugged off any reply, his eyes on the choir master. Oh, Daphid. Daphid. Oh, oh, Daphid. Daphid. Um, really, my lord, you'll like Meg's voice, Daphid Williams assured him. I think she can be made useful around the estate, too. Startled, Pete glanced at his under bailiff and then looked down at the music the bass on the other side was handing him. I wonder, Williams, if you would believe me if I told you I wasn't thinking about your wife's voice when I sent for her, he thought. I wanted you to have Meg close, and that was all. It doesn't matter about the state, Williams, he whispered back, even as the choir master, no respecter of Marquises, glared at him. Uh, you have a nice little cottage. Just let her keep it for you. He laughed and then put his hand over his mouth when the choir master sta started in his direction. Consider it an early Christmas present. The St. Philemon's Christmas choir waited a few minutes more to allow the latecomers to seat themselves, and Pete looked over the contrib his contribution of singers, noting with a brigade major's strategic eye how wisely they had spaced themselves among the uninitiated. <laughs> I appear to have three sopranos, two altos, three tenors, and three basses, he observed. Wow, fraggy. Three enough. tenors. Three tenors. The poor uh, ballet. Yeah. Shine. With half an ear, he listened to the choir master's usual greeting, which contained, as it did every year, equal parts resignation and exhortation. What is exhortation? I don't know. Look it up. <laughs> oh, my God. That was a violent hiccup. Yeah. Exhortation is an address or communication emph um, emphatically urging someone to do something. Got it. Emphatic is a better word anyway. It's true. Mingled with sufficient rue to dampen even the celestial enthusiasm of the multitude of a multitude of the heavenly host. Wow. That was so many what words. That was another SAT sentence from our girl <laughs> Carla Kelly. Resignation, exhortation, sufficient rue, celestial enthusiasm, multitude. <laughs> so many words. It doesn't even sound like a real sentence. Well, because I skipped half the words in it. Oh. <laughs> that doesn't make sense. But no, seriously, if I read this again, like, that's so much to take in. Wait, read it again. Off an ear, he listened to the choir master's usual greeting, which contained, as it did every year, equal parts of resignation and exhortation mingled with sufficient rue to dampen even the celestial enthusiasm of a multitude of the heavenly host. <laughs> what? <laughs> I must suggest to Mr. Woodhall after Christmas that it is time to replace our choir master, he thought. And then he smiled at the idea of approaching his vicar, who would not recognize a tune, even if it bit his bottom. <laughs> I wonder, 
He will wonder why I'm so inclined, but offer no resistance. Ah, oh, well, this is one of the few occasions in life when being a marquee and the holder of Woodhull himself. So he's going to mail oh, the... You're cutting out. You're cutting out. Oh, no. Read the last sentence again. I heard you laughing, but I didn't hear the sentence. Well, he is like, this is one of the few occasions in life when being a marquee and the holder of Woodhull's living will carry the day, he told himself. So he's just going to blackmail the vicar into getting a new choir master. <laughs> cool. He's the one that chose the vicar. Right. Oh, truly. God. The choir master cleared his throat and everyone looked up expectantly. Oh, God. What kind of voice do we want for the choir master? I needed like a commanding, like loud, deep voice. Okay. My dears, let us not tackle the Hayden immediately, but warm up first on a hymn. He turned <laughs> to the organist. May I suggest the mighty power of God unfolding? A note, please, sir, if you will. <laughs> It was a rousing, familiar hymn, and everyone knew it. The sound of the incredible, perfect harmony exploded in the church, booming from wall to wall with all the majesty the hymnist must have intended, but which had never before been even remotely achieved at St. Phil's. I love also still, like, sorry, their church is called St. Philemon's, and they have a nickname for their church, and that's so funny to me. I'm laughing because, do you have Phil's where you live? coffee shop no but i know of them okay that's just what i'm thinking about every time it, it says phil's I'm like yeah phil's is saintly yeah <laughs> and the harmonies in there are incredible oh yeah by the end of the first stanza the choir master was gripping the lectern his knuckles white at the completion of the chorus he waved the choir to a halt and staggered to a seat a soprano and a tenor from the front row reached him first, fanning him with Hayden while an alto loosened his neckcloth. He sat for a long moment under their ministrations and then waved them back to their seats with a hand that shook. The doctor, who only dreamed that he was a bass, took his pulse and then helped him to his feet. He guided him back to the lectern and the choir master clamped his hands firmly again, a changed man. I'm sorry, I'm still, I'm not over the line. A doctor who only dreamed he was a <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> it's like me when I hear um, the queen of the night and I dream I'm a soprano. I think it's the same scenario. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, I do that with every song that I'm newly obsessed with. I'm like, yeah, I could definitely sing this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sing them. <laughs> or the doll song. Do you know the doll song? Mm -mm. It's from an opera. I don't That's know why. the name of the opera, but it's like, okay, I can do the first part a little bit. It's not going to be amazing, but it'll like be the notes. But the second part, there's like an optional higher note mm. that when I hear it, I'm like, there's no way. Like, how does any human voice reach that? But so, and I'm, this is nonsense. I don't know the words. It's not in English, but she's like, and then the next one i just have to like play you the note not is even it, is it higher than aaron Tavay's opt up yes it's so high doll song opera. okay hold on i'm gonna mute myself so we don't get in trouble the, uh, <laughs> the, the opera is tales of hoffman Make it that way you will. Hold on. I'm fascinated by this. Oh, it's heating up. note 
How the heck? Can anybody <laughs> make that? I can't even. No, I can't. I don't have any vocal control to, to even like go back and forth. Like it's crazy to me. Wow. So, anyways, every time I hear that song, I'm like, yeah, I'm a soprano, yeah, and the narration is like, yeah, in your dreams. <laughs> so that's what I thought of. That's a very good comparison. Yeah, except he's the opposite. He dreams he can hit the low notes. Oh, I could, oh. I could hit the low notes. Oh. Oh. <laughs> it was still a moment before he could speak. My dears, the strangest thing has happened, he said finally, sounding like a different man. I dreamed that you were singing and in tune. How singular. <laughs> what a sassy choir master. <laughs> he looked down at the music before him, but to Pete's view, he was not actually seeing anything. I am certain it was a trick of hearing. Let us tempt fate again and try a mellower hymn. Lambs sweetly feeding, if you will be so kind, my dears. <laughs> the soft beginning was no more difficult than the magnificent spiritual call to arms that had preceded it. As led by the Welsh singers, each note was sustained, melodic, and softer than dew on the hillside. Pete did not sing, preferring to listen to those around him and enjoy their special national gift. Okay, what is with her thinking that only Welsh people can sing? <laughs> Are Welsh people known to be especially good singers? I thought that was Filipino. <laughs> Stereotype? I mean, okay, Welsh people, good singers, who the internet says. Oh my God, you'll never guess who's Welsh. Are like Kelly? No, but this really comes full circle in a way that I could not have predicted. Who? Bonnie Tyler, <laughs> singer of Total Eclipse of the Heart. <laughs> Like, what are the chances? <laughs> oh my god. No, so funny. Oh wait, Wales is known as the land of song though. Oh. Okay, I guess that is a real stereotype, but that's very funny. I didn't know that. Oh my god. Um, the song that they're gonna sing at the Christmas competition is Total Eclipse of the Heart. Did we not make this joke that like Rosie's baby was gonna come? <laughs> it's gonna be the one who flies forward from the music video. That's the baby. Because <laughs> we said the baby's gonna sing the high note. <laughs> That is incredible. And and wow. the thing is, we're at 1727. So we are really getting there. Oh my god, wait, is now a good time to go to the bathroom? Yes, do it. Okay. Oh, and you know what? Let's both take a break because I just realized I have leftovers that I was supposed to put in the fridge and instead they're just sitting oh. here. So oh, yeah. Be our okay. Beer.
goes. Mm -mm 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 -mm. This book. Okay, I'm saying this to anyone who shows up. So I use this like self-care productivity app called Finch. And when my little birdie who I named Trixie goes on adventures, I get a chance to like influence things that she likes and doesn't like. And she asked me a question about Frankenstein and I answered and now she loves Frankenstein. So Trixie has taste. It makes me so happy. Ah, oh, yes, Trixie. <laughs> okay, what have I completed today? <sighs> I guess we can set goals for tomorrow. That'll be how we do our energy today. On a time there was light in my life, now there's only love in the dark. Nothing I can say, totally clear inside the heart. Nothing I can do. I don't know the lyrics. I don't know, this is a long break. Oh, comment. <gasps> Hi, Cammy. <laughs> uh, we are in the middle of a break because Sarah is in the, the water closet, as they call it. So that's why I was just singing to myself and then sitting in silence. And we are reading. <laughs> we're reading a Christmas historical romance. And I also love that you comment right as I'm like in your Instagram stories. It's like, oh, let's see what, let's see what how many friends are up to. And here you are. Um, Any minute now, Sarah. I want to know. Sorry, what... sorry, sorry. <laughs> I heard you singing though. <laughs> I sang a lot. Mm -hmm. I sang like half the song. I know. Also, I noticed while washing my hands that I have like a whole silver hair. Can you see that? I can't, but I do believe you. This one? 
<laughs> this one. <laughs> this one right here. Um, I am aging faster than charred. No, you know what? I believe you because I they they happen, they exist. <laughs> like I literally at like 25 was like, Mom, when did you get your first gray hair? Should I be concerned? <laughs> and she was, was like, No, this is what? Was it our age that she yeah. got her gray hair? Okay. Yeah, she was like, it was like in my 20s. And I was like, see, I thought I was just like prematurely stressed about everything. That would also make sense to me. I think it's both. I think it's genetic and stress. Yep. All right. Yeah. I'm ready. Let's go. Okay. While you were gone, Cammy showed up. So it's very exciting for Hello. me. Hello. Glad you are Hi. here. <laughs> Julia is doing a great job with all the voices. Okay. What was happening? Oh, yeah. We Because we were talking about the Welsh singers. That's how we got off track. Oh, my God. I still can't believe. <laughs> okay. Oh, I um. Uh, he noticed that others of the choir were doing the same thing. Uh, listening is what he means by the same thing. The Welsh singers could not have been more oblivious. They sang with the fervor peculiar to their race. Okay. Fervor Why are there so not... many Welsh people now where there weren't Welsh people last Christmas? Um, I don't know. Rosie <laughs> wasn't there previously. The builders, I guess, he all hired from Wales. <laughs> I don't know. He just summoned them. He's like, there's he, no... He's a marquee. He has yeah. It. He's got power. He sang with the fervor peculiar... Or they sang with the fervor peculiar to their race. Fervor he had remembered all these years and thousands of miles from dry Indian washes and the scorch of a sun that burned up everything but song. Oh, my God. <laughs> he talks about India more than Sinjin. Truly. He really does. And also, I feel like I want to use that line, like, about myself somehow. Burned up everything but song. I love that. <laughs> the hymn ended, the choir master closing it with all the feeling and artistry of a man half his age. This is a miracle, he declared. My dears, do let us examine the Hayden before us. He leaned forward to confide in them. I admit, I was wondering if we would have the capacity for this selection. Wasn't I the silly one? <laughs> I love that he said silly. <laughs> they sang for more than an hour. The choir master in such a state of bliss that his wife had to tug at his arm finally. With the effort that, or with, when that effort proved fruitless, she dragged his watch from his coat pocket opened it, and waved it under his nose like smelling salts. Very well, if we must, he grumbled. We must, thought Pete. He glanced at Rosie, who started to droop. In another moment, they were dismissed, and he was at Rosie's side. Okay, this is such a wild choir practice to me, because he is, like, the choir master does nothing. He's like, here's the song I want you to sing. You get going with the piano. Rest of you, I'm listening. Like, teaching them harmonies, non-existent. That's why they've lost the competition every year. Yeah, he does nothing. <laughs> Without a word, he helped her into his cloak, into her cloak, and assisted her from the church. Because, you know, the steps might be a little icy. You gotta watch <laughs> out. <laughs> she was quiet on the ride home, and he could think of nothing to say. It was enough to sit next to her. Before they turned into the lane before wife. Yeah, see, before and before again. She keeps doing this where she uses the same words so close together. I don't like it. She leaned against him, asleep. Sitting there in the dark carriage with the other women silent and sleepy around him too. When did they start choir practice at 8 p.m.? Why is every woman sleepy? He said they sang for one hour. Singing is too much for them. <laughs> like, imagine going to work working for one hour and then someone finds you and you're like <laughs> that's exactly how I am though <laughs> well there you go he realized with a pang how much he missed the conversation of women at night oh true did he just say he misses pillow talk yes <laughs> 
true, Lucy had not been the warmest of females. Don't say females. I hate that. (laughs) But early in their marriage, he had enjoyed her inconsequential chatter about the events of the day told in their entire minutia from her point of view. Oh, my God. Me telling a story. (laughs) Their entire minutia from her point of view. It was always different from his, and it charmed him somehow to know that women were different creatures entirely. I miss that, he thought, as the carriage came to a stop and Rosie woke up. She apologized for crowding him, but he only smiled and helped her down. Will was asleep when they checked on him. To Pete's eyes, his son was sleeping peacefully, but Rosie had to tug the blanket, tug up the blanket higher and smooth his hair before she would leave the room. This must be what mothers do, he thought, as he watched her bend down awkwardly to kiss him. I am sure Lucy never did. Okay, but she literally was a mother. Like, (laughs) I hate to break it to you. (laughs) Pete, Pete, Pete. Okay, I'm sorry. Who? We have a a character that I don't recall. Do you remember a Gracie? No. (laughs) No. It help if I tell you that her full name is Gracie Biddle Jones? <laughs> no. Is that the mom? It makes me think of Sweeney Todd when she's like, Beetle, Beetle, Bum, Bum, Beetle, Bum, Bum. <laughs> like the, um, what's she called? Like the beggar woman. Anyways, Gracie Biddle Jones, who could not carry a (laughs) tune, had volunteered to sit with Emma. When she came in the room, she said goodnight quickly and left the room. See, yeah. (laughs) See, why not just say, like, when they came in, she said goodnight quickly and left the room. Like, you don't have to say the room twice. Came in the room, left the room. That's what I'm saying. It's like these little redundancies that we could be editing out Carla Kelly would be so successful with our help just saying that's the real reason these books haven't blown up she could be a two-time USA best-selling USA Today best-selling offer Offer? author (laughs) Rosie felt Emma's forehead and nodded in satisfaction she turned and held out her hand to him good night my lord She had no excuse to stay, so, or he had no excuse to stay, so he went to his own room, knowing somehow that he would be awake all night. Why now? Um, When the doctor arrived in the morning, he went first to Rosie, as he had promised, spending some time with her in another room separate from Emma. He came out to assure Pete that Mrs. Weatherby was as strong as a little French pony and right as a trivet. (laughs) I love these sayings. What was the other one? Like a roast? What was it? <laughs> uh, like sturdy as a roast. Or <laughs> Doctor, all similes aside, will she do? Pete asked point blank as he walked with him to Emma's room. The doctor laughed and clamped his hand on Pete's shoulder. I forgot the voice I gave the doctor. Was he old? Yes. Someone would think that it was your baby, laddie, and not poor Junius Weatherby's, he exclaimed. She's fine, and she knows to send for me when her time comes. He frowned then. Can't trust the Weatherby's with so much sense. The doctor passed sentence next in Emmy's room and doomed Rosie Weatherby to expulsion by his cheery news that Emma simply couldn't be more fine, and aren't we all happy about that? (laughs) No one was, is the next <laughs> sentence. Emma was. God. What Everyone else is like, Emma, get back on your deathbed. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Will dragged around with a long face as Rosie carried her small bundle downstairs. Emma was a thundercloud, refusing to be placated with his promise of a ride on horseback with him just as soon as she was a little better. Oh, even Emma doesn't want to be better. She's like, I want Rosie to stay. I'll be sick again. (laughs) And Pete knew he had not felt so dreary since the long voyage from India when he had paced the deck and wondered what he would do. The day was fine enough, so he took the gig. As they rode along, Rosie turned her face up to the sun. Hmm, I do not suppose there will be many more fine days like this. She looked at him. 
Does winter come early and stay long here? I, he said simply, berating himself that he had no conversation. If he possessed any glibness, he could at least tell her how much he appreciated her help. Oh my God, glibness like Seon from the Tainted Half with her glib tongue. She was warned. <laughs> my word of the day. Glib. Yeah. Um, and if he had enough nerve, not the battlefield kind, but the sitting room sort, he could confess in an offhand, insouciant sort of way that oh. if he, I gotta look up insouciant. That was an SAT word for me. Oh my God. Do you remember what it means? No. <laughs> insouciant, showing a casual lack of concern or indifferent. Hmm. He could confess in an offhand, insouciant sort of way that she had certainly inspired him into thinking about looking for a wife. As it was, he was silent and miserable. My lord, is there a workhouse hereabout? Oh, that's such a sad question. Is there a workhouse? Rosie asked suddenly. Her question dumbfounded him, and he nearly dropped the reins. A what? he asked. A workhouse, she repeated, softer this time, as though she hated to say it again. She looked at him, as if trying to decide if she could really speak. The words came from her mouth, as if she pulled with tongs. Ew. Gross. What? <laughs> Make up the words. <laughs> Lady Weatherby says that will be my fate. She must be joking, he finally said when he could speak. Come to think of it, she has always been overly dramatic. The Weatherby house was in sight, and he slowed the horse without thinking. Surely you misunderstood her. He turned his attention to the horse, unsure of what to do in the face of a question. Such a question. I'm certain you did, Mrs. Weatherby. Pay it no mind, he added hastily. She was a long time silent, and he knew somehow that he had failed her. I probably misunderstood her, she said her voice low, her eyes down. And here we are now. Rosie held out her hand to him. I can get out by myself, my lord. No need to trouble yourself. He protested. Oh, oh my she... God, is she going to fall on the slick stones? Ah! Let's see. Um, but she was out of the gig before he had time to get down. She retrieved her bundle from the back and gave a small curtsy. My lord, make sure Emmy stays indoors for a few days. And tell Will, her voice trailed off, and she could not look at him. Well, just tell him goodbye. Then she was gone inside. Oh, my God. Okay, she didn't slip. Whew. I was sweating, though. Mm. He rode home knowing he had failed her somehow, and it bothered him through the, what remained of the day and into dinner. Weary with everything, he pushed away his favorite Yorkshire pudding, which only brought consternation to the footman's face and cook upstairs in tears. <laughs> the cook is crying. She's like, I messed up the Yorkshire pudding. I'd be crying out of happiness because then I'd be like, oh, now I can eat my own cooking. Oh, yeah. Bless. His evening was spent in tense kitchen diplomacy that left him with a headache and inclination to chew nails and the thought that if he were married, his wife could handle the domestic turmoil that now fell to his lot. Oi. Shard, no. <clears throat> yep. I am making a muddle of my life, he thought as he went to bed. My daughter still pouts because Rosie is gone. My son mopes about. And I'm a coward where women are concerned. What was it that Rosie meant by her remark about a workhouse? What do you mean? What did she mean? She's worried to death in a workhouse, my guy. What could she mean? But what does it mean? Oh my God. That's like Nightmare Before Christmas. Interesting reaction. But what does it mean? <laughs> He saw her in the morning as he rode toward the new barn. She walked slowly on a distant hill, classic Rosie, leaning into a stiff wind. Rosie, go inside, he muttered to Sepoy. 
Surely it is not that bad at the Weatherbees. Shush. Shush. Sorry. Because he made a point from then on to ride a different way to the barn, he did not see her again until the next choir practice. He had arranged for Daffod Williams and his lovely Meg, here now and truly a beauty, to pick up Rosie for practice. He wondered all day what he would say to her, but that night she came to him and spared him the trouble of a first move. She held out two folded pieces of paper. Oh my God, what are they? My Lord, if you don't mind, I wanted to write to Will and Emma and I want to spare the expense of the penny post. Oh, that's so nice. He pocketed the letters. I will be happy to see that they get your letters. You can probably depend upon prompt replies. He hesitated. They miss you, Mrs. Weatherby. To his chagrin, tears welled in her eyes. She struggled to control them, and he flogged himself because he did not have the courage to take her hand or say something, anything. She was about to speak to him while the choir master rapped on the lectern for their attention. Wait, I can do that. <laughs> Halfway through the Hayden, Peter Chard, wow, full name, they full named him, <laughs> admitted to himself that it was not beyond the realm of possibility that Rosie Weatherby loved his children nearly as much as he did. Yeah, no kidding. She's like really nice. <laughs> she like kisses them it's, as they go to bed. She writes them letters. She nurses them back to health. She's doing more for them than he is. I mean, truly. When the choir master finished by easing them through his favorite passages from Handel's Messiah, it came to Pete that he loved Rosie Weatherby, daughter of a Welsh sergeant and a foolish, well-born lass, widow to the most worthless Weatherby on the planet, and mother soon of that man's child. Oh, I wish he had added soprano to the list. I know. Wait, that's so funny that he's like thinking about this love confession, but he still can't help but insult that one Weatherby guy that fell out of a window. <laughs> yeah. Wow. I'm in love. I'm in love with that cheese for brain idiot's late <laughs> widow. <laughs> I'm a fool where women are concerned, he concluded simply. I, he thought about Rosie constantly through November and into December. Oh, my God, a time jump. <gasps> letters came and went regularly between Rosie and his children delivered during choir practice. So he's loving her for like two months, not saying anything. He is he, a chicken. He hated himself for it, but he read Will's letters from Rosie after his son went to bed. <laughs> Emma had secreted hers someplace where he could not find them. He had occasion to thank God Will possessed le a less suspicious nature. They were funny, well-written letters, telling about things she saw on her walks, mentioning last week's Northern Lights, and describing events from Portugal, the West Indies, and Canada, where she had adventured with the army when she was young and in her father's care. Pete wrote several letters of his own, which he never mailed. Chicken. He pinned his hopes on Christmas coming soon. The choir was fine beyond words, and there was no way they could ever lose the competition this year. Life will return to normal, he told himself, even though he knew that was the biggest lie he had ever perpetuated. Well, the second biggest. I must talk to her, he told himself over and over on the day of the last practice. Snow was falling, and Daffod and Meg were late with Rosie. There was only time for them to slide into their seats before the choir master's downbeat. Chard sang with his eye on Rosie, I mean Pete. Even in the dim church light, he could tell that she was more pale than usual. She's about to give birth. Sure, for sure. When he caught her eye once, there was such a look of utter hopelessness on her face that he could only stare and wonder, or she's about to be sent to the workhouse. Both. For oh my sure. God. Without being sent to the workhouse induces labor. Yikes. The choir master kept them long after the hour for the practice to end. This is our final rehearsal, my dears, he reminded them. I don't, that feels wrong for him to say my dears. <laughs> Carla always sprinkles that in the weirdest way. <laughs> Every time a character says my dears, I'm like, I don't know why you put that there. <laughs> it like only worked when Mama said it. Everyone else, I'm like, mm-mm. 
<laughs> and my mom's been gone the whole book. So. Yeah, she's been gone for like since 18%. How long does it take to cure a child of chicken pox? Well, it's all the nieces and nephews. All of them have chicken pox. Well, many are there. I don't know. <laughs> but it was plural, nieces and nephews. So it's like 20, you know? She's like going down the line. Um, he leaned forward in conspiratorial fashion. I have heard rumors that our efforts have not gone unnoticed by St. Peter's and St. Anselm's. He permitted himself the luxury of a chuckle. <laughs> I have even heard that they are worried. <laughs> I am worried, Pete thought, with another look at Rosie. When the choir master released them, Pete rose to go to her, only to be collared by Mrs. Barker, the doctor's wife, who chose that moment of all the moments in the cosmos to thank him for his clever idea of finding all those Welsh singers. <laughs> I told you, he rounded them up. <laughs> She went on and on as he watched Daphne help Meg and Rosie into their cloaks. Excuse me, Mrs. Barker, he said. Finally, he hurried down the aisle and outside, holding out the letters from his children as Williams lifted Rosie into the gig. Mrs. Weatherby, these are for you, he said, handing them to her. Williams took his seat in the gig, making sure the blanket was snug around Meg, and then looked at Pete unexpect er, looked at Pete expectantly. Rosie opened her mouth to speak and then closed it again. She tried to smile and handed him letters for his children. Goodbye, sir, she said, as Williams spoke to the horse. Oh, that's bad. That's a bad goodbye. It's a final goodbye, she thinks. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oof. She's... Wow, the weather bees suck. Yeah, they're terrible. To the best of his memory, she had never said goodbye to him. It, usually it was, till next week then, sir? The thought troubled him all the way home. He didn't question it. He just questioned it in his head. In the, the next morning, he remembered the letters and went to the book room for them. There were three instead of two. With <gasps> fingers that shook, he opened the one addressed to him, read it, and then called for his carriage. He ignored the startled looks of the butler and downstairs maid as he ran down the hall, pulling on his overcoat as he went, and then not even bothering to stop for his hat. Springham was all he said to the coachman after giving the direction of the Weatherby estate. <laughs> I need to hear more people say that when they get in a carriage. Springham! <laughs> Halfway there, he became aware that Rosie's letter was still crumpled in his fist. He smoothed it out and read the words again. Not that he had forgotten them from the first reading. He knew they were for they were burned in his brain forever. They are not turning me out, sir, because they do not want me around. Oh, no, they are turning me. Jesus. Okay. They are turning me out, sir, because they do not want me around when their precious Claude marries his high stickler from Durham. I am not sure precisely what their plan is, but Lady Weatherby has made it plain that I am not a part of the family circle. She swears she has proof that my baby is not Junius's, but she cannot produce it. I am sorry that I could not accommodate you and sing in the Christmas choir, but they have assured me that I will be gone by then. Please accept my kindest regards for your good health and fortune. Remember me to your children. He didn't bother to raise the stupid gargoyle knocker on the Weatherby's front door, but barged into the house, shouting for Rosie. Lady Weatherby, teacup in hand, came from the breakfast room, followed by Claude, looking more oafish, oafish than usual. Where is Rosie? He demanded, grabbing Claude by his shirt front and backing him up against the wall, where he began to cry and plead for his mother. <laughs> Pete shook Claude like a terrier shakes a rat <laughs> and repeated his question six inches from the sobbing man's face. Oh my God, what a visual. <laughs> Lady Weatherby's shrieks of, Murder! Murder! brought Sir Rufus from his book room. As Chard slammed Claude against the wall again and Lady Weatherby screamed, Sir Rufus leaped back into the book room and locked the door. <laughs> I like you that. Said, um, my family can take care of themselves. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, they'll be fine. They don't need me. Well, I like that, Pete thought as he gave Claude a final shake and let go of him. A door opened upstairs. Pete looked up to the first floor landing and then took the stairs two at a time to stand by Rosie Weatherby. 
I need some help, she said simply. If you could get your cloak, he interrupted. Without another word, she did as he said. He followed her into the room, one quick glance telling him about the paucity. Hold on. Presence of something only in smaller, insufficient quantities or amounts. Scarcity. Okay. Telling him about the paucity of Rosie's life with the weather bees. There was no fire in the grate, no carpet on the floor, nothing of any color besides the pictures Emma had been drawing and sending each week. He was almost surprised to see that they had allowed her a bed. Is there anything you want to take with you? He asked, furious with himself for his lack of courage and love. No, no, she stammered. Just my bonnet. Because we know that's the only article of clothing she owns. <laughs> What a good throwback. <laughs> no baby clothes, nothing of your own. He wished his voice was not rising, but it was. She shook her head and took a step away from him. I have nothing. Come then. He took her by the hand and helped her down the stairs, taking them slowly because she, because she could not move fast and trying to calm himself because he knew he was frightening her. The door Sir Rufus had retreated behind was still closed, but he gave it a good kick as they passed. <laughs> he stopped in front of Lady Weatherby. Sorry, I read that sentence and it didn't fully process. <laughs> just to show him, like, I'm leaving. How dare you? He just... <laughs> it seems like a toddler doing that. Oh, my God. And he stormed in front of Lady Weatherby and narrowed his eyes. You people are deplorable, he said, all his fury focused now in those few words. Lady Weatherby glared back. Dear Lucy must be spinning in her tomb. I am amazed what length she will go for a soprano, she sneered. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know me, he replied. Rosie burst into tears in the carriage, and he had the good sense to hold her close. When she wiped her eyes and fi uh, finally with his handkerchief and blew her nose, he held her away from him a little and took a deep breath. Oh my God, it's the next underline line. This is only the <gasps> second that we found. <gasps> Wait, what? <laughs> I'm so confused. Okay, sorry. About to keep you in suspense. Mrs. Weatherby, Rosie, if you please, would you mind terribly if we took a bolt over the border and spliced ourselves? <laughs> Meaning, let's go elope, but what a wild let's way to, to say that. Let's go to Gretna Green. Oh, wait, how do you say? Why can't they just like go to the church house where they Would you mind them? terribly if we took a bolt over the border and spliced ourselves? <laughs> Yeah, for real. He's like, he owns the vicar. The vicar's in his pocket. I think you can get a little advanced marriage license going. Oh my God. Mm -mm. That is like the least romantic line I've ever heard. <laughs> and people underline it. They're like, whoa. <laughs> he How many people was it? Was it the, se the same seven people that underlined the other sentence? Let's see. Seven people. He could not overlook the surprise in her eyes. You can't be serious, my lord, she said. Never more so, Rosie. I can't have my best soprano vanishing a week before we sing, he teased. <laughs> oh, Chard. This won't do, he thought, as he saw the confusion in her beautiful eyes, now red with weeping. I love you, Rose. Won't you marry me? She nodded and then blew her nose again. Wait, he doesn't even know that her name is actually Rose, though. Like, she's always been rosy to him. So bold of him True. to assume that it's a nickname. Yeah. Uh, so, as we returned quite late that night, both considerably shocked by what they had done. Wow. How close are they to the border? Wait. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Let's see where Northumberland is. North. Um, Berlin, it's a region. In, oh, it's very close. It's like way, 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 way north. It's literally the tippity. 
Yeah, it literally borders Scotland. So yeah. I think that's why it takes place there. He's like, would you mind if we just bop over the border real quick? Get ourselves <laughs> married. The way he phrases, like, do you want to like bop over to the grocery store and pick yeah. up some muffins? <laughs> Well, now I'm glad I gave one random character a Scottish accent because it totally makes sense. <laughs> oh, wait, I have to reread the sentence because it's so funny the way they, again, this is classic Carla Kelly. <laughs> As man and wife, they returned from Scotland quite late that night, both considerably shocked by what they had done. Well, I am sure shocked, Pete reasoned as they wrote in silence. <laughs> We're shocked. I'm shocked. <laughs> Why does she do this? She I had no idea. Purpose. Like, no yeah. way. Oh, my God. Okay, I had sorry. no idea. I was so impulsive. He glanced at Rosie's profile. Uh-oh. Her. Now calm after a storm of tears before and after the brief ceremony. And you, my love. That was also... And his thoughts for some reason. The house was dark, which suited him. He helped Rosie upstairs to his own room, found one of his nightshirts for her, turned down the coverlet on the side of bed, the bed that would be hers, and went downstairs to write to his mother. This is your wedding night and you're writing a letter to your mother. <laughs> Pete, please, I beg of you. Why is he like this? Oh my god. Oh, that's incredible. Okay. When he came to bed, Rosie was asleep. Great. She made no protest when he gathered as much of her clothes as he could and went to sleep. Probably as he's the big spoon. Now. I was gonna say, but he probably like flipped her around so that he could be the little spoon as he prefers. <laughs> he couldn't remember a better night's rest. In the morning, Will and Emma were pop-eyed, astounded, and then silent for the space of a few seconds when they heard the news. Then Emma burst into tears and threw herself into, herself into Rosie's arms, which only set off his wife again. Oh, 20% off world market. Sorry, I just got an email. <laughs> and that's an important one. That is an important one. I love cost plus world market. <laughs> um, Will leaned against him. Papa, why do they do that? I'm happy, but it doesn't follow that I want to cry. Oh, Will. No, no, no. Wait, this does not make sense because Will wanted to marry Rosie. So he's not, like, angry at his father for stealing his woman. Well, remember, he they talked about it and he was like, okay, maybe I'll marry a, a woman like Rosie. His dad talked him out of it. But yeah, he should be jealous irrationally because he's a child. Let him find out someday on his own time how skittish pregnant women were. Okay, but Emma's not pregnant, you weirdo. <laughs> She's a child. In answer to his letter, Mama was home in a jig time. Well, she was home in jig time to gasp and scold and storm and rage about the sitting room while he listened, his hands behind his head, his long legs stretched out in front of him, content. The sight of him... So relaxed. Hmm. Seemed to set her off further, but he could not help himself. He had never felt better. Rosie was upstairs in his, their bed, because Dr. Barker had said she needed rest. Already her complexion was pinking up again, and her eyes had that familiar sparkle. Wow, so okay, if someone's away taking care of children with chicken pox, just tell them you eloped, and that'll get their attention real quick. <laughs> Lesson learned. Oh, God, I haven't done her voice in so long. Um, Son, you have not said a word. I have, you have not heard a word I have said, <laughs> Louisa Chard concluded. She had not even removed her traveling coat and was only now stripping off her gloves. I have, he replied. Let me see. The entire village thinks I have run mad in my attempt to retain my best soprano and my favorite, <laughs> Lord Wythe's cuckoo, probably the result of inbreeding amongst England's better houses. He gave his mother a sunny smile. Was that the gist? <laughs> Mama gave him a look that would melt glass. Oh my God. You have made us a laughing stock. You are giving the protection of your name, position, and honors to a common soldier's daughter. 
who is bearing a child of this shire's most notorious scoundrel. He smiled. That's it, Mama. Straightened up then. Mama, I am a farmer. Time passes pretty regularly here. I'll continue farming. Will and Emma will thrive. The new little one will fit right in and we'll be happy. I hope you can adjust, Mama. If not, there is the dower house or Bella. Mama left that afternoon after another row when he asked her to remain to at least hear the choir he had got together. At your command, I might add. She chose instead to return to Bella's for a good sulk, and it bothered him less than he would have thought. I, I didn't imagine this of his mother. She didn't seem like someone who really cared about titles. Yeah. Also, like, did she even meet Rosie? Because Rosie was a nice woman. Yeah, That's she's, like, really enough. lovely. How dare she do that? Rude. Well, who needs her? Bye, Mama. <laughs> Rosie came downstairs a day later, her serenity restored. She didn't say much to any of them, and he did not press her. <sighs> Sorry, we're getting there. Every now and then, he would catch her just watching him. You are wondering what kind of a queer fish you have caught, aren't you, my dear, he thought. There was a question in her eyes, but until she found the courage to ask it, he would not intrude on what remained of her pride and dignity. Christmas Eve bought a skiff of snow in the morning. The house smelled of candied fruit, rum sauce, and cinnamon. Mm. Chard and Will spent the afternoon finding baby clothes in the storeroom. They took their findings to Rosie, who was resting again. He knew she would cry at the sight of all those clothes, and she did, sobbing into another of his handkerchiefs as she folded and unfolded the mound of nightgowns and blankets. He helped her dress that night for the competition, buttoning up the back of her dress pausing to kiss her neck before the last few buttons. Wow, saucy. So we have a neck kiss before an actual kiss? Yes, <laughs> that is correct. <laughs> she looked around in surprise and then smiled at him. I'm sorry, I don't know who's saying this. Oh, it's her, okay. I know I am a trial. She took his hand where it rested on her shoulder. I do need to ask something, Peter. It's a favor. No, no, it is not that. She stopped. It's something oh, no, I need to know. Sorry, you just cut out. Oh, no. Okay, wait. I need to reread this also because I'm confused. Where did... <laughs> She's asking um, for a favor. Oh, okay, okay. I do need to ask you something, Peter. It's a favor. No, no, it is not that. She stopped. It's something I need to know. What did he assume the favor was? Where she goes, no, no, it's not that. <laughs> His mind is in the gutter. Yeah, really. He's like starting to unbutton his pants. She's like, no, 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 not that. Not the breeches. Oh, yeah, because I'm unbuttoning your calf buttons on the breeches. That's real sexy. Yes, that's his, his classic move, as we know. Um, oh, this is so sad. Oh, okay, no, sorry. Do I really love you or have I done this to secure a soprano? He asked softly. She gasped, turned around, and took his face in both hands. No, I do not doubt that you love me, she said with a sudden ferocity that made him go weak inside. I've always known that. It is something else. She raised herself to his lips, standing sideways to accomplish this because of her bulk. <laughs> his arms were around her, his face in her hair. He wanted to kiss her again, but Emma bounded into their room and tugged at his shirt. Papa, Will says we have to hurry, she grinned up at Rosie. Do you like to kiss my father? <laughs> Emma? <laughs> Very much, my dear, Rosie replied promptly. She released him and sat on the bed. Emmy, if you will help me with my shoes, that will give your father time to tuck in his shirt tail and slap a little color back into his face. <laughs> Excuse me? She didn't even ask the question. What was the favor? I'm so yeah. confused. Okay. Also, wait. It said that they, uh, I want to kiss him again, or he wanted to kiss her again. But, like, when was the first kiss? Or was that when you cut out? Um, She kissed him after she said, I have no doubt that you've 
that you loved me. I've always known that. It's something else. And then she kissed him, but she oh, was I she just like, grabbed his face and then turned sideways. No, she was wow. like sideways like this, and he's here, and she's like, Mwah, cause her stomach is too big. What an awkward framing of the scene. It is. And then that's when Emma runs in and goes, do you like kissing my dad? And she's like, yes. That's awkward, especially knowing that Rosie gave the daughter the sex talk. So true, though. Absolutely so true. Also, like, what a bold move to have, like, a sex positive main character in your Regency closed door romance novel. Yeah. But it was the theme, Carla. I mean, yeah. And also, okay. And so now Pete needs to tuck in his shirt tail and slap a little color back into his face. Like, okay, so I think when he when she said I need a favor, he started like pulling out his shirt. He's like, okay, let's go. So we were right. Yes. She's like, tuck in your shirt. We got songs to sing in the church. You monster. His face is pale because the blood rushed to his dick. True, though. They wrote to St. Anselm's, the most distant of the three churches, but the largest. He was pleased to see the nice fit of the kid gloves he had bought Rosie that morning. She rested her hands in his, gripping it tight in intervals. Nervous, he asked. She nodded. Can we talk tonight? She asked as the carriage stopped and the children clambered out. I still have a question, please. I'm dying to know what the question is. I'm like, let's make predictions. Um, um, would you hate me if I told you this baby was not my late husband's? <laughs> That's like, what I was going to say too, so. I mean, yeah, like, I don't know what else she would ask him. Or, is it okay if your children call me mama? Yeah. Or her being like, did you love your first wife? And he's like, no, I was so happy when she died. Yeah, it was a great relief to me when my <laughs> wife died. Thank you for asking. Yeah, I think I can't think of anything else but those three. Um, suddenly, he knew what it was she needed to know. And he also knew that he had a great secret for her, too. What? We will certainly have to trust each other, he thought. He felt a rush of love for her that left him almost reeling. Of course, he whispered back as he rose to help her from the carriage. How did he know her question? I guess that's love, right? At the entrance to the church, she stopped suddenly and leaned against him for a long moment. Afraid, he asked. She nodded but said nothing. People stared at them as they came to the church, but he did not care. His life and happiness were no one's business but his own. He knew his neighbors. In time, they would come to know and appreciate his wife. Oh my God, Rosie's like the nicest person. Why is everyone so mean? <laughs> like she shows up, walked 25 miles to get here, has done nothing but like be kind, volunteer her beautiful singing voice and nurse children back to health. And everyone's like, oh, my God, can you believe he married her, that Welsh thing? <laughs> Calm down. He was about to sit down with the rest of St. Phil Squire <laughs> when his old bailiff, who never came to church, shouldered his way through the crowd. Oh, my God. My Lord, my Lord, he was shouting. And the church fell silent. Your barn, it's on fire. <gasps> Without a word, the Welshman in the choir rose at once and followed him out of the church. Oh my God, do you think it was the weather bees? Do you think they burnt his church or his barn down? For in minutes, what? Let's see. In minutes, they were on their way across the field to Wythe and the distant barn. Let it be a little thing, he pleaded as they rode toward the high, thin place that grew more. They to relief. The new barn was still intact. Look here, sir, just beyond, one of the men shouted. It's the old cow barn. So it was, the old structure that had probably been a tool shed since the Bishop of Durham's days was blazing away, the roof gone and the stones so hot they popped. He motioned at them all to stand back 
and then looked around to discover that everything he had stored there, old tools, extra pails, spare rope, harnesses needing repair, was lined up neatly on the grass. He smiled. It didn't take a genius. I think that St. Phil's marvelous majestic choir. I'm sorry. <laughs> they commit arson because they don't want the choir to sing. Yes, but you have to hear this sentence. <laughs> okay, sorry. Let me try that one again. I think that St. Phil's marvelous majestic choir has been diddled by an Anglican arsonist, he said. <laughs> Put that on the sticky notes for innuendos. <laughs> by an Anglican arsonist. Oh my God. Someone from St. Anselm's or St. Pete's has thoughtfully selected my most expendable distant outbuilding to burn after removing everything of value inside. Yeah, way to give yourself away by taking everything out of the shed. <laughs> Daffod Williams shook his head. I don't know, sir, but what you Northumberlanders aren't more troubled. What? I don't know, sir, but what you Northumberlanders aren't more trouble than all these Mataras at Asaye, he murmured. I don't know what he's saying. I think it's about the war again. Someone started to laugh. How did the Welsh get a name for being troublemakers, sir? Someone else asked. Chard looked around him in perfect clarity. Is his name Chard because... His barn got shard. Because <laughs> the barn is shard to a crisp. It was foreshadowing all along. Oh my god. In perfect charity with his wonderful choir. Oh well, maybe next year. Come, lads, since they so thoughtfully left us the pails, let us extinguish this little diversion. Let us sing too while we're at it. Smoky and soot covered, they returned to St. Anselm's long before the competition and services were over. Another Christmas had come. It only remained to collect his wife and children and go home. Mr. Woodhull, he said to the, his vicar who waited, at, who waited inside the church, it was only a small blaze and not my new barn. Merry Christmas. <laughs> Don't you want to know what happened? The vicar asked as Chard looked around for his wife. Eh? Mr. Woodhull gripped his arm, completely forgetting his place. My Lord! We won! That's not possible, Chard said. Almost the whole men's section was with me. And may I suggest that you advise the vicars of our neighboring parishes to preach an occasional sermon on repentance? <laughs> we won, the vicar repeated. When it looked like you would not return in time, the choir master suggested that we turn to the Messiah. You know, what the selection that you had been using as a, well, as a warming exercise? He nodded. The vicar smiled. And when Mrs. Weather, uh, Lady Wythe, sang that part and gently lead those who are with young, there was not a dry eye in the building. She yes. won them over through her golden throat. Her golden throat and her golden belly. <laughs> As the words sank in, he stared at the vicar. But, but who sang the other parts? The Welshmen were gone. We had the Welsh women, of course. And let us say that either our Lord chose to smile on us for one night, or perhaps, just perhaps, our choir has been learning from masters. Congratulations, my Lord. I'm delighted, Pete said, suddenly tired and in need of his own bed and rosy to keep him warm. Where's my wife? It was the vicar's turn to stare. I thought you came from wife. No, we came right here from upper pasture. What's wrong? Mr. Woodhull took his arm and started him for the door. Yes, it's time. When Lady Wythe finished singing, she asked to be taken right home. Lord Wythe, I do believe you'd better hurry there. It may be that our Lord is sharing his birthday with someone else. <laughs> oh, man. 
I knew she was gonna, her water was gonna break when she was singing. You did, you nailed it. He set records getting to wife, his mind a perfect turmoil. She had been so quiet all day, and she had, and she kept gripping his hand at intervals on the ride to St. Anselm's. Oh my God, was she in labor all day? <laughs> and she sang through it. Oh my God, her voice was literally her labor pains. Oh my God, literally he's saying it. I remain an idiot, he told himself in exasperation. She was in labor and I didn't even know it. What adult Rosie has yoked herself to. <laughs> Obviously she hasn't a clue in the world how to choose a husband. Okay, self-roast. <laughs> I had better be her last one or no telling what trouble she will get into. <laughs> Rude. Emma and Will were both asleep on the sofa in the upstairs hall, and he passed them quietly. The doctor stood on the landing, as well as two of the Welsh women. We're getting so close to the ending. I can feel it. <laughs> Didn't you say January? He asked the doctor. I distinctly remember January. The women laughed. They, don't, they come when they're ready. She has a daughter, one of them said as he opened the door. Oh, my God. He missed the entire labor. He went inside on tiptoe, taking off his smoky overcoat and washing his hands and face before coming to the bed where Rosie lay with her little one. He sat beside them, staring at the pretty morsel cradled so carefully in her arms. She was as beautiful as her mother with the same dark hair. Okay, they still have to ask their questions, though. What are we going to name our child? Oh, my God. Let's name her. I don't know. What's a name? associated with things that have happened in this story. Carol. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Carol. <laughs> I'll die if they name her Carol. <laughs> um, Rosie, she's a wonder, he whispered. Or is it going to be Noel? Sorry. Aww, that's kind of cute, though. Her eyes were closed, and he knew she was awake. Too tired to open her eyes, he thought. And I was putting out a stupid fire. I mean, that's not stupid. That's still worth doing. <laughs> I wish I could have been here for you, Rosie, he said simply. It won't happen again like this. You had to know the baby was coming. Why didn't you tell me? She opened her eyes and his heart melted with the expression in them. You're going to love me, even if I am stupid and stodgy and unimaginative, aren't you? He thought with an effort. She moved her hand from the baby to cover his hand. I don't think you really cared if we won or not, did you? He shook his head and kissed her. You know it never really mattered. Did it matter to you? She nodded. Singing matters. I had to be there. He got up, took off his shoes, and lay down on her other side. I mean, that's fair, though. He's getting in bed. Yeah, you take off your shoes, you heathen. It's just the fact that it's, like, mentioned in the narrative. Again, and... without fail. I think you cut it a little close, love. She nodded again. She turned her head to look at her baby. I have something I should have asked you sooner. He put a finger to her lips and raised up on his elbow so he could watch her expression. Let me spill my budget first. Huh? <laughs> if I'm not mistaken... It will answer your question. He cleared his throat, wondering just how far back to go. Oh my God, I'm like so tense right now. Begin at the beginning, he told himself. After Will was born, Lucy didn't want anything more to do with me. She was an idiot, Rosie murmured, and her eyes closed again. Well, yes, that's neither here nor there. I was in Ireland with the regiment, and we were headed to India. I was summoned home. <laughs> summoned yes and it did surprise me because i was pretty sure from things i had heard that lucy was grazing in other pastures i knew it we're so good at reading foreshadowing <laughs> <laughs> grazing in other pastures well wow. that's a very delicate way to put it oh my god do you think Lord Weatherby or whatever her husband was the one that Lucy was grazing with. I'm gonna be shook. Okay, hold on. 
Rosie opened her eyes and stared at him. Did you know the man? Yes, indeed. Someone rather high placed in the government. Okay, maybe not Weatherby then. Oh, damn. Oh, you'd know the name, but I can be a gentleman. Lucy obviously wanted me to share her bed, but I chose not to and left the next morning for India as I had planned. He paused and waited, knowing that Rosie was quick. Emma, she gasped. We said this, yes, is another man's child. I had to be summoned home to Lucy's bed to do my conjugal duty and avoid a scandal. Oh my God. So he literally slept with her just so everyone would think that it was his baby. Well, he, didn't, he didn't have to sleep with her. But he did. Oh, he did? Yes. I knew it from the moment I heard of Lucy's death in childbirth. Letters are so slow to India, my love. Rosie was silent, taking in what he was saying. She pulled her own daughter closer, and as he watched, the tears slid from her eyes to puddle in her hair, still damp from the sweat of childbirth. He let her cry, knowing that he had answered her question. During the terrible voyage home, I thought about what I could do, or what I would do. Everyone thought Emma was mine, but I knew different. I could have created a dreadful scene. It might have even toppled a government I was not too fond of. But you could not, Rosie said, burring closer to him. That would have destroyed Emma. He felt his own tears rising this time. Rosie, I looked down at that innocent baby, and I could not do it. Emma may not have been born, may not have been bone of my bone like Will, but she is my daughter. He patted her hip. And that, my wife, is my great secret. I trust you to keep it. I'll never fail your, our daughter either. She is already mine because she is yours. Instead of answering him, she handed him her baby, and it was all the response he needed. He sat up, holding his new daughter as Rosie rested her head on against him. Oh, here's another underlined one. Depend on me, he kissed. He whispered as he kissed the little one. Depend on me. The end. We don't get a name. We don't get a name. I, I'm head canning her hand. Head, head, blah, 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 blah. Her name is Carol to me. Yes. Absolutely. Thanks. Baby Carol. Oh wow. So we got every plot twist. Wow. We done good. I'm a little good sad. job reading it. I'm a little sad that even for like, because yes, it's like a Christian romance. So it is what it is. But mm -hmm. like we got a couple kisses. We didn't even get like the implication of anything more i know they well, got married married she, her body was a little tired at the moment i mean if i just gave birth i wouldn't want to do it either yeah but like that scene when it's like oh off to scotland oh we're back and then he like puts her to bed and writes a letter to his mom like at least <laughs> make out in the bed for a while like i don't know am i crazy you're right i mean there was arson we could have had and yeah. it's like like we said they were already talking about it with the kid yeah so what would you rate it okay wait hold on i gotta do my system oh yeah I'll, I'll I'll narrate this process here. Okay, rating. Oh, plot. I'm going to give the plot a four. I'm honestly not too mad at the plot. Hmm. I think it had a solid, like, basis for the conflict. Um, I liked that it wasn't, like, something really, really dumb keeping them apart. And that once he was able to finally confess his feelings for her, he was like, Let's get married. We don't need to dilly dally. Like, I respect that. And the choir thing is dumb but cute. Characters, I'm going to give. I'm going to give a generous three. Not because I thought they were especially good, but I don't know. Like, I like Rosie. She's not, but I don't but he was oh, not he out again oh no i don't said, love... I like rosie but but she's not like very well rounded oh yeah, yeah. Um, and p 
Pete, I don't love, but he was fine as a love interest. You know what I mean? Like he didn't do anything to Rosie where I was like, hey, don't do that. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe the belly touching was a little much, but I'm going to let it slide. I Pacing, about that scene. <laughs> Pacing, I'll give three. Some parts were a little rushed, but it is a short story. Writing, I'm so sorry, Carla. It's a two. You know I have beef with word choices, phrasing, and repetitive words. Um, but generally, it wasn't like abhorrent, so it can't be a one. Mm -hmm. And enjoyment, well, this is enjoyment on a very different level. Um, let me see where that averages out to right now. No, hold on, that's not right. Hold on, I gotta change something. I'm moving plot down to a three. I feel like I'm being too nice. <sighs> okay, if I had not been reading this out loud with you, my enjoyment would have been lower. Same. So I'm trying to think of how to reconcile with that. I'm just gonna give enjoyment a cool, exact two and a half <laughs> just straight down the middle i've never seen you give a, a decimal for the breakdowns that's the funny thing is i went to one of my reviews today from like a book i read years ago and i saw my enjoyment was like a 4.5 and i was like i can do that like i was confused <laughs> my own system <laughs> so i'm gonna do it so three, 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 two, two and a half, which comes out to nine plus two plus two and like a half. Like two point something, 2.7. That's a cool 2.7. Oh my God. That was amazing mental math. Oh, I just guessed. Oh my I God. Just, I thought you were a genius. We <laughs> no. should have let you believe that. It was exactly 2.7. <laughs> and that feels right to me. Yeah. I was going to say like 2.5 for me. Yeah. Like if you, you're like, if, you weren't narrating like two. Tim, thank you. That was so nice. You've thank literally you. been here the whole time listening. <laughs> Thanks, Tim. Oh. oh. If you want, or if you're interested in Carla's other stories, this is part of a collection. Yes, it's true. There are three more. Amongst oh. them, what are their titles? Um, Hold That's on. A good question. I got it. I got it. Hold on. Uh, an object of charity, the Christmas ornament, and the three kings. Oh, yeah. The three kings, whose um, protagonist is named Sarah. So I think that's the one we should read next year. Yeah. That's our 2023 edition to the, I forgot her name, Carla Kelly Christmas <laughs> Cinematic Universe. I guess it's not cinematic. The Carla Kelly Christmas universe canon universe oh there That's you go mm -hmm, mm -hmm. or just maybe canon the carla kelly christmas canon i like oh th yeah because then it's just alliterative yeah and we know she likes that with the slippery stone <laughs> slippery. <laughs> cool <laughs> it is all right carla hit us up yeah, Carla Kelly, if you ever see this and this video does not get copyright claimed, it True. could. We also, read a whole book. <laughs> the final India tally is 23. Wow. It seems like it would have been more. Mm -hmm. and the I guess it is a short story. Innuendo is 31. Wow. I think my favorite innuendo is still Flash and Dash. Flash and Dash was the best. Follow closely by Golden Throne. Yeah. It started out so strong. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. So it, do we log it for only one? <sighs> well, I mean, let me see here. If I go on Goodreads, what is it? 
say? Carla. Carla Kelly. <laughs> Christmas collection. Also, shout out to Kara for putting this on our radar. Yeah. Kara, you brought such joy into our weekend. You don't even know. <laughs> She's the winner of two Rita Awards from Romance Writers of America for Best Regency of the Year. So. I didn't even know that was a thing. But Me good neither. job, Carla. Oh, wait. I'm going to see someone's breakdown. Someone <laughs> make a joyful noise. Four mm -hmm. stars. Mm -hmm. Okay. This is according to Jacob. Chard is a sweet and and honorable and faithful. Indeed, we see that his faith penetrates his soul. The word choice there. It's very on brand, honestly. Um, and that he is a good Christ-like man. We don't have a very good read on Rose because she isn't terribly present. What we do see of her shows a kind and caring woman doing her best with a rotten hand. They'll make a great match of things. And this story would have been a truly outstand or would have been truly outstanding if Chard hadn't gone so passive in the last quarter. His reluctance to act was weak and un undermined all the rest, telling us he was good and kind and thoughtful. Rose's situation is dire, and she needs help and safety sooner than later. Every day he wastes getting her out of that, quote, home is a blight on his soul, and he takes months. Oh, my God. I mean, it's true. It's true, but the way he said it, every day he wastes is a blight on his soul. I know. That's harsh. Okay, Jennifer gave Make a Joyful Noise two star. What does she say? I liked the, I don't know what this means. I liked the H in this one a lot. Probably hero. Oh, hero. I understand why some readers would be annoyed with him for being such a coward in love, but it wasn't like the H was in danger or anything like that. I'm yeah. not minimizing how disgusting her dead husband's family was to her, but I understood what, or I understand why it took the H over a month and a half to come to his senses. Safe and very tender but she gave it two stars she said like nice things about it i know oh someone gave it five stars make a joyful noise starts with a humorous premise a widowed marquee gets stuck with the task of recruiting the christmas choir from a neighborhood of people who cannot carry a tune from that beginning nice. kelly weaves a tale of two people hurt then abandoned in love who through their growing feelings for one another find the courage to love again. When Peter Chard hears Rosie Weatherby, a lovely Welsh woman, sing in church, he remembers the talents of the Welsh fusiliers. You're right, I don't know how to say that. Yeah. He served with in battle in India. He recruits Welsh servants and farmhands to his estate to join the choir while growing more attached to Rosie, newly widowed, heavily pregnant, and rejected by her husband's family. That's just kind of a summary. Yeah. But she liked it. She did like it. Someone said, I am a Carla Kelly fan. So am I. <laughs> That's just our review, too. I'm a Carla Kelly fan. Oh, my God. Should we do a joint review? I wish I could, like, invite you as a collaborator on our review. Yes. Oh, my God. I mean, I think you can tag people in your review, so. Can you? Yes. Wait, I want to try. I want to make them, like, a little, like, a little mood board. Like a little aesthetic from <laughs> and it's like a pregnant belly, a church, <laughs> winter parish. <laughs> okay. Choose shelves where I should add dates. So that'll go to my goal. Yes. Hold on, I'm doing this too. December. We started on the third. Okay. Wow, we're How such many pages was it? Oh wait, you don't know. Yeah. Okay. Choose shelves. Um, historical fiction. Mm -hmm. Romance. Short stories. Wow, we literally have the same shelves because that's the same three I'm doing. <laughs> oh, Julia read... 
aloud. What is it called? The make a joyful noise. A joyful noise. I always just want to say joyful noises. <laughs> Edit my activity. There it is. Goodreads, give us half stars. Jeez. No cowards. I didn't love the story, but I had a wonderful time. Do I have anything else to say? Um, can I not tag you? I really think I can. Maybe it's just that I can add a link, but I will add a link. Agonist shard. Oh yeah, Julia's profile. And Are you I googling? What? Are you googling Julia's profile? No, I'm putting it in my review. Oh, there you go. Let's see. I have to find you. I know that's what I'm doing. I'm like, okay, friends, friends. and I go to S, and then I find you. Mm -hmm. Too many people to start with S. There you are. Boop. Boop. Ah. Okay. I'm going to post it. Oh my God, you're so crass. Go ahead. <laughs> I'm saying we had a rip roaring good time. <laughs> Even though. Oh, I forgot to say that I'm a Carla Kelly stan. Oh no. I got to edit the review already. <laughs> we hoped. However, we do look forward to continuing on in the Carla Kelly Christmas canon parentheses CKCC wait I came to edit and then I forgot what I was going to edit it you oh. were going to say you're a stan oh yeah we are officially Carla Kelly. Actually, I'm not going to say that. <laughs> You're like, I can't live up to that. <laughs> I don't know Carla Kelly. Three out of five. Facing. Writing. Two out of five. Sorry, Car Sorry Carla. And enjoyment. 2.5 out of 5. Um, do I have anything else I want to say? I think that's it. Let's put the third and let's post. Great. Let okay. me like like your update. <laughs> yeah, ditto. Ah, <laughs> oh, it's not on my feed yet. The oh, heck? there it is. I found it. I found it. Oh, you put a hyperlink. Yeah. Oh, you're a genius. Okay, yes. I do need to edit it. <laughs> I am a genius. Thank you. Okay. Where let's... is your review? Well, I'll do it the lazy way. I'll go back to my review, click the link to your profile, <laughs> and then just go to your updates. I hate Goodreads. Okay, if this is 240 pages and there's four different stories, then the, it's 80 pages long. Yeah, roughly. 
I'm okay. also liking that you want to read Thief of Shadows because winter, winter. How do you insert a hyperlink? Um, where the text oh I, oh the a oh I have to do HTML. Yeah, I like how it tells you how to do it with HTML instead of giving you just like an easier option to do. I know. Don't you just love? Okay, we're gonna continue fine tuning our reviews, but I'm ending the live show. Okay. So, anyone who watches this back later, Godspeed. Yeah. Wishing well, you a golden throated Christmas. Yeah. Make a joyful noise this Christmas. Yeah. And to all, a flash and dash. I didn't know what to say there. <laughs> I do legal flash and dashes. Yeah. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs>